All right, welcome back to another episode here on Grow the Earth. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get free tomato plants from the tomato plants in your garden. So we're gonna get tomato plants through a method called cloning. Now, this is not a unique method that we can use to tomatoes. Uh, there are a few other plants that we can do this with as far as uh, basil, uh, thyme, uh, some of your vining plants, uh, grapes do this very well also. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna take a cutting from these tomato plants and uh, we're going to, to root it. So we're actually going to save the genetics of this plant by making a smaller version of itself from itself. Now, why would we wanna do this? Well, first I would say we're gonna do this because uh, our tomato plants are running towards the end of their life. They've been in the ground since March, uh, like the second week of March. And uh, on the other side, uh, they put out tons and tons of tomatoes. So these plants are a little stressed, they're a little withered, uh, they're tired. For lack of a better word, they're tired. Uh, so what we're gonna do is, because here in zone 9A, I'll have tomatoes into November, depending on the weather, sometimes into December if we don't get a bad, you know, a bad cold spell. So <clears throat> with it only being July, I've still got plenty of time to get plants in the ground and uh, be able to have a good harvest before the cold, the cold comes in and kills them off. But I don't want to start from seed because if I start from seed, I'm going to lose four weeks before I can put them in the ground. With this method, if all goes well, in two to three weeks, I can have these in the ground. And Tommy, you say, why, we, or why are you using suckers? I thought suckers were bad for your indeterminates, especially growing like the method you are with single stemming. And yes, that is true. And the reason that they're not great for a tomato that you're growing single stemming is because a a sucker is basically a, an entirely new plant that is growing off of the main stem of your plant. And wherever that sucker is, it'll start drawing energy from that main plant. And if you have any fruit above where that sucker is, it's actually being harmed because it's not able to get all the energy that it needs. So, uh, but on the, on the other hand, if you're gonna do something like this to where you're going to do some cloning, the only way to clone this is to have suckers. So, uh, simply what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a garden. We're gonna look for the strongest plants, the ones that we know that produced well, the ones that we know have not had any kind of fungal issues or anything like that. And we're gonna cut off the, uh, the suckers. Here's our tools for today. A good pair of sharp scissors, and a glass full of water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna find these stronger uh, suckers. Now, I, I know that I'm single stemming, so I shouldn't have any suckers, but I've seen what's been going on, so I've kinda let these plants go so that I've got suckers in order to harvest. Now, this plant here was a real good producer, so I definitely wanna continue the genetics on of this plant into our, our next planting here. So we see that we got these big suckers here, so we're gonna go ahead and cut one of these off. And we'll, we'll cut a couple leaves off on here on the bottom. And we're just gonna put it right in our cup of water here. And um, actually, you know, this is a really good producer, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a second cutting off of this one. I really like this plant because it's very strong and healthy. Uh, it's looking a little weathered now, but it put out very well. I mean, you can see the clusters of the tomatoes here. There's two, four, there's six tomatoes right there on that one cluster, and we had this whole thing full of them. Now, the cup of water here is just simply so that the, the fl fresh cuts we just put on are not exposed to air, and they start oxidizing. Because we want those fresh whenever we do our process inside. Uh, so we want to keep a cup of water on hand to put all of our, our cuttings in, and that way when we get inside, we're basically, it would have been a, just as if we had clipped them right off the plant because the oxidation process hadn't happened where those, those cuts start to try and heal up. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish my clipping here 
I'm going to get all the suckers that I want, and then I'm going to meet you guys inside. Now that we're back inside and we've got all of our, our suckers that we want, let's go through how we're going to trim these suckers so that we can plant them. Now, uh, if you're cutting suckers, you may get something like this, especially if you've been letting it go like I have. And it's very crucial that you know exactly what you're going to trim off and what you're going to leave um, because we want this plant to be healthy. We want it to grow fast. We want to be able to, you know, get this back in the ground as soon as possible. So we need to know how to trim this thing correctly. Now, this is going to be way too big in order to, to plant. So what we're going to, have to do is we're going to need to cut in here and cut off some of these limbs and well that is actually a split so we really don't want that um, so that is about what we're left with and I'm going to even go so far as to clip off a little bit of that and what we're left with is a long stem with a few leaves and we don't want these very tall so we're going to give them about like that and now for this, we definitely want to cut at an angle because that's going to give us the most surface area here for it to take root. Uh, the, so I'm going to go through and trim all these up and then I'll come back to you guys very shortly. I had to turn the camera back on very quickly because I forgot to mention one thing. If you're going through and you see a cluster of flowers, we want to nip those off. I know it seems counterintuitive, but we don't want our plant doing anything other than making new roots. All right, and now that we've got all of our plants trimmed and we, um, we're going to get our soil. Now this is, for me, is just regular potting mix and I actually mixed in some fertilizer. And now a lot of you guys are at your, you know, on the other side of this camera looking at, why aren't you using seed starting mix? Well, seed starting mix is nothing more than a medium to start seed in. It has no nutrition, it has no nitrogen, no fertilizer, and it is sterile. Which works great if you're starting seeds inside of a greenhouse, but when you're coming to something like this, it's already growing and now you're expecting it to grow roots, it needs nutrition. And seed starting mix is not the way to go. Uh, I actually abhor seed starting mix just simply because once you start your seed, once they get to the seedling stage, which means they get their first set of leaves, you have to replant, repot that, or you have to start supplementing liquid fertilizers onto that plant, or otherwise it will die because it'll starve to death, because there's no nutrients in that, that soil for it to pick up. So with this, it's just regular potting soil with some fertilizer in it. And of course, I use the MicroLife fertilizer in here uh, because it's going to have all the nutrients and all the things to help this plant to start its roots and start over again. And now the one other thing that we are going to need is some root stimulator. Now, this is not harmful, it's not bad for you. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, take a spoonful of it, but it's nothing more than some, some uh, acids and things like that that are gonna help this plant to germinate roots. And you can get different kinds. This is a powder. Um, they have other kinds that are uh, paste and so forth. But I think the powder is just easier because I can see where I'm putting it on and I'm not wasting a lot of it. So what we're simply going to do is we're going to take our, our potting mix here. I'm going to get about half of one of our containers here of it. I'm going to take one of our plants, try and sneak one out of here, and we are going to and uh, after I trimmed all those, I made sure to put them back in the water. So that way, when we come to this stage, we can put some root stimulator on it, which will be held on by the water that's there. 
and we can finish topping it off with moist um, moist potting soil. Now, the other thing that we need to to uh, remember is too, if we leave any branches on here, we don't want to bury those because those will cause rot. Uh, secondly, the soil you're using needs to be moist. In other words, you see it sticking to my hand. But there is no water pooling in this. I can't squeeze it and push any water out of it. It's simply moist. Um, the other thing is, when you're looking at your plant, if you see a lot of hairs on it, that's a good thing because those are actually micro roots. And once you put those below the soil surface, they are going to make root. So if you see your plants have a lot of hairs on them, it's even better. That may be something you want to look at whenever you're cutting your, your suckers outside off of your plants. Now, we'll, um, I'm simply going to put this inside of our greenhouse. Um, that we actually have in our garage. If you watch my other video, uh, I've got seed starting and uh, you know tips for the greenhouse. If you watch that greenhouse video, then you know that we use very high high intensity lights because that's what seems to make these things grow roots better. Um, so, with that being said, I'm going to finish these up off camera. Um, if you've seen one, you've seen them all. You do them all the same way. Uh, as far as the root stimulator goes, you can use as much of that as you want, as little of that as you want. I would say to make sure that where you're cutting, where you've actually made your diagonal cut, that you want to completely cover that with rooting hormone. Uh, you can even, you can coat the whole stem that you're gonna plant in the ground. I don't know if it's going to help, it may be just a waste, so I would kind of venture away from that. To cap that off guys, as always, there is a godly message in everything that we do, even doing this. And that simply is that if God sees that you're growing well, and He comes across and He sees you're tired, He can renew you. He can replant you. He can replenish you. He can make sure that you get a new life. Because with God, when you come to Him and you give yourself over and you pledge faith in His Son, you can be just like this little plant here. You can have a new life and start over. All the old things are gone. And uh, that's a, a wonderful thing. You know, a little bit of a confession here. Uh, I gave my life to the Lord. Well, actually, my whole family did. Uh, probably about 10 years ago. And it was, I wouldn't say it was an immediate transformation, but I am wholly and entirely a different person today than I was 10 years ago. Um, I couldn't make a complete sense without a curse word in it. Um... I was very, very mean. It could be very brash and harsh. And I had no compassion for other people. None at all. And uh, I think that's a complete 180. Uh, people that I knew in my previous life, uh, when they see me, they meet me today, they're, they ask me what happened because they don't understand, because I'm not anything like what I was before. <clears throat> yes, I have the same personality, but my, my attributes and the way I deal with people and the way I handle myself is completely and utterly different from those times that I was 10 years ago. So guys, as always, I ask you, pray over your garden, pray over your family, and have a great day.